back at Kirkuston for race two on August the 28th of the NI Sevens Challenge. There's only this race and one more race in September left to go in the championship. You can see there the red flag being shown to the NI Sevens guys. They're going to be started 10 seconds after the main road sports A class go. We're on board here with Mark Crawford. He's right towards the back of the grid. Having qualified well. This is a reverse uh, grid race. He gets a crack and start. He gets away. He's in behind Johnny Armstrong there in the blue Westfield. He's past Brian McGoldrick and Jimmy Dugan. And that's Gary Jones in the yellow Westfield. He's past him as well. Fantastic start from Mark. Ryan second in the championship. Here you can see from the camera down near Colonial, you can see the A class have got away and Barry McBride, one of the NI7 runners, has gone with them and Larry Mahoney has got a bit of an early start as well. And then in the main NI7 bunch, you have Andy Parkinson in the red MK from Robin McGrath. Robin, late on the breaks, come down into Colonial, looks to have taken the lead. And indeed, there is Mark Crawford already up to, well, second place behind Robin. Both these guys behind Larry Mahoney. Streaming through another good turnout from the NI7s today. Mark in behind Robin McGrath. He's left the door open going down into Fisherman's. Mark late on the brakes. Makes his presence felt. That's him well up through the field. He's made up maybe 10 places there in the, in the course of half a lap. In behind Larry Mawinney now after that slightly jump start. And eases past Larry down into the chicane. And that's Mark now. Got a couple of cars between him and his nearest championship rivals. Currently, as I say, Ryan, 10 points ahead of Mark around McGuinness. Mark able to take a racing line down into the hairpin. And up ahead there you can see a white radical and in front of him there's Barry McBride. Ian Barry got that early start, so I'm not really sure if the, the stewards will have something to say about that. Mark just pulls out there and eases past the radical. Here you can see around Detters, Barry McBride in the blue striker, Mark Crawford in the white striker. Mark's made up such an amount of ground and on the brakes. Going down into Colonial, he just eases alongside. The inside line going through Colonial 1, and that's him with the lead, the undisputed lead of the race for the NI7s. Second, you've got Barry McBride and Larry Mahoney, and then it's Robin McGrath. It's all piled through there. Oh, and you can see that's, that's Ian Leinster and Ricky Morgan have had it coming together, going down to the Fisherman. The yellow flags are out. They both managed to keep it going. the leader carrying on unaware of the drama behind him at Fisherman's and Kean, big harmful to curb trying to get a good drive out onto the back straight Kean, he looks to have a little bit of a lead so he's able to take a proper racing line around the bottom end of the track here doesn't have to worry about anyone diving past him up the inside on the brakes so he's able to go wide try to carry as much speed as possible through the hairpin out and carrying that speed all the way down the start finish straight and through debtors you can see there the Jeanette of John McCandless now is his next target he's one of the A class and quite a way back to Barry then Lawrence McWinnie then it's Robin McGrath Jimmy Dugan Ryan McGuinness the championship leader and Andy Parkinson they're all they're having a battle amongst themselves and seems to be slowing them down Meanwhile, up at the front, Mark pulls alongside Janetta. Here's the inside line then for Colonial 2. Larry in second, Larry in third. Oh, and there's been an accident. That's Paul Forsyth's Orange Tiger on the outside. Looking very badly beat up. Andy Parkinson's Red MK is missing a wing. On the inside of the track, that's Ryan McGuinness, championship leader, and Bram McGoldrick. And they look both to be out. An awful lot of fibre glass there, strewn all over the road. Mark Crawford, meanwhile, out front, unaware of any of this going on behind him. That looks like that could maybe stop the race. You can see Ryan McGuinness in some pain there. It proves to be just a sore arm. No serious damage done, thankfully. Mark, meanwhile, in the back of the circuit. Through the chicane. 
building up quite a lead. Of course, if there's a red flag, that'll be done away with. You can see there the waved yellows. As the medical cars arrive down, take care of any injuries. Let's see exactly what's happening. See lots of cement dust over the track from the oil being spilled in the earlier races. But we have seen there's a red flag out. Yes, you can see the red flag and on the inside of debtors as well. The marsh is close there. Yes, waving a red flag. And you can see the ambulance is out. There's marshals on the track now trying to clear up the debris. They'll bring them back round and form the grid and restart them. Mark's back right off. The drive round and I'm sure he's now getting an idea of what exactly has happened down there. At least four cars out. The sorry sight of Paul's Tiger. Away. Martin will continue his drive around to the grid and line up once the marshals clear away all the debris. Good to see the roll cage doing its job. And on the grid, Mark's are concerned if he's got enough petrol to finish the race. They've been holding them here a while while they clear that up. Starter comes round, letting them know that they'll all be let go in one bunch. There'll be no staggered start. But first, I believe they'll do a warm-up lap. Just to get, try to get a bit of heat back into the tyres. So it'll be Mark Crawford in pole position for the NI7s. Then Barry McBride in second alongside him. Behind him will be Larry Mowinney. Then Robin McGrath and Jimmy Dugan. Trying to get a bit of heat into the tyres. Cool down, of course, sitting on the grid. There's Robin, Larry Mowinney, and Jimmy Dugan, Johnny Armstrong, Gary Jones in a somewhat reduced class. And they're under starters' orders. The red light's on, and away they go. Mark, trying to get a good start. Try his best to hang on to the A-class guys. Let's see them coming around debtors. Stevie Donnelly there from the A-class leading them round. Mark, clear it. Lawrence Mahoney in second. Barry McBride. Much more powerful car engine vehicles. Lawrence in second, Jimmy Dugan up to third, Barry down to fourth. Then Rob McGrath, Johnny Armstrong, Ian Leinster, after his earlier incident, has got back on the terms. The car engine cars, which are more powerful, a lot heavier, and going to pull away in the straights from the lighter bike engine 7 on Mark Crawford. Mark is still confident enough, he's got enough of the lead that there's nobody going to try to outbreak him down into the hairpin. So he's able to try and take the faster line, carry as much speed as possible through the corner, and will have the speed as he goes back onto the start finish line straight. Should be able to hold any advantage all the way down to breaking for Colonial 1. Behind him, it looks as though Jimmy Dugan's got second. And he's going to do a Daigo Hilltop racing car. It will cost 
built himself. Lawrence Mahoney in third. Then you've got Robin McGrath from Barry McBride, and Johnny Armstrong, Ian Leinster, Gary Jones, and Davis Buick. That's the NI7's field. side, trying to get himself as big a radius as possible, going around the hairpin, and the car, and towards the outside of the track there, at this stage his intention will be to try and put as many fast laps as possible, try to prevent Jimmy Dugan from bridging that gap to him, as you can see he's got a couple of seconds over Jimmy, who's developed a second or two ahead of Lawrence Mawinney, and then behind him, it's Robin McGrath and Johnny Armstrong. They're battling for fourth. Twenty points, of course, for a win. One point for a pole. One point for fastest lap. So, if things stay the way they are. Mark would wind up with an 11 point lead going to the last race. Oh, and Johnny Armstrong and Rob McGrath have had it coming together. Johnny looks to have lost a little bit of bodywork there. Down into Fisherman's, the two very close together. Mark, clear lead, staying out of trouble. Johnny looks to have kept her running and is able to continue. At least some bodywork damage done there. Possibly more. Right out to the outside. Nobody can try and put in fast lap times, try and keep Jimmy at bay. 